Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. In the previous video, we took the XR2 Raven Star up from Cape Canaveral, brought it into orbit, doing a scram ascent, and once we got into orbit, I started using Transex to set up my rendezvous with the ISS. The main thing I'm trying to do with this, this little video series is refamiliarize myself with the XR2 Raven Star and use some of these other tools uh, to regain familiarity with them, like Burn Time Calculator and Transex. So with all that said, let's jump back into the flight and continue on. So I'll switch over, uh, switch views here to the, to the full screen. And once again, I do have my heart rate monitor up there underneath of my pilot display, just mainly for fun. So let's unpause the simulation. So in the previous video, I went ahead and set up the, the maneuver. And as you can see, our closest approach to the ISS is currently 3.4 meters. And I'm going to go ahead and dial that in just even a little bit more accurately just because I think it's amusing to uh, do such things so and then and then we're just gonna burn the maneuver once we uh, once we get down to like you know a meter or something okay three point uh, six meters and it looks like it's climbing a bit so maybe we'll undershoot that a little bit like that because that because if I put it on that side the numbers are counting down a little bit all right so let's go ahead and view over to the uh, the maneuver now one thing I did forget is that I put this uh, burn quite a bit out into the future so that means what I will do is that that those exact numbers are going to change a little bit by the time we actually get around to doing the maneuver so I'm just gonna warp time forward and we're gonna get down to at least uh, two or three thousand seconds and then we're gonna do a quick update and we'll have to refine that maneuver a little bit at that point because by the time we warp time forward you know over a hundred thousand seconds um, our telemetry is you know gonna be slipping in quite a bit so let's go ahead and warp time let's go to 10,000 get through that quickly so we're down to I'll come back because it's really easy to overshoot especially if you accidentally hit T again which I have done before like my finger was just on the wrong button and I slipped so we're down to 3,000 let's go a bit further out so about here so this will be good and you'll see what will happen when I view back over to the maneuver and I'll go to um, I'll go to orbit updates here and you can see well our closest approach is still you know 900 meters which is certainly acceptable but since I took all the trouble to you know set it up so that we're driving through the front door of the ISS you know I might as well take two seconds here and just dial that in one more time and here we are that's 40 meters let's go to the date here and this is really sensitive and let's go back to prograde and all right we'll, we'll live with 40 meters uh, just for the sake of the video if I was messing with this outside of the video I would dial it in dial it in even more all right now we'll view over to uh, view to target warp time forward here just a little bit more I'm gonna do one more quick check when we get down to like 500 seconds or something like that right here let me just do one more check and we're gonna go to view uh, view uh, base orbit update and update the universe really quick and 45 meters is good enough we'll go with that okay so now I'll view over to target and we will turn on the automatic alignment wherever it's at that one and we'll bring up burn time calculator and we'll get the maneuver from from transex over to burn time calculator and the time to ignition is 500 seconds so what is that about nine minutes or something like that all right we'll warp time forward to get there more quickly a little bit more quickly than that 
And we're coming up on that time, so we'll go down to 10. And we'll go to real time now. And we're going to do this burn in right now. All right, we turn auto center off, view over to the maneuver, do uh, turn the maneuver mode off, and then we'll have, we'll have to refine just a little bit with translation thrusters. And I think it's always, I think it's always just prograde because it, because uh, when, when you get the maneuver into burn time calculator, it always cuts it short by just a little bit. And that's fine because if you're ever doing it the old fashioned way, uh, you always have to like clean up the burn manually at the very end. So there we are, 40. Three. All right, 41 meters, good enough. All right, let's bring up the docking MFD on this side, and we are 354 kilometers away from the ISS, and our rendezvous point is over here somewhere, so we have about half of an orbit to go to get there. Let's go ahead and copy the docking information up to the HUD and warp time forward until we get uh, time to dock, or time to rendezvous, rather. And our expected velocity when we get there is 44 meters. That's also something I like to try to minimize, but I didn't pay much attention to it this time, but 44 is not bad. Um, although while I'm thinking about it, I will go ahead, turn on the APU, and open the retro doors. And we might as well open the nose cone as well while we're at it. Was it control K on the XR? Yeah. Warp time forward. APU fuel 80%. Turn off the APU, switch back over to these MFD views. And I think I can see the ISS blinking, probably doesn't show up in the video playback, but I think I can see the dots right there. So we're getting closer, and yeah, we should, we'll actually run into it if we don't break in time, so we want to make sure we get everything set up for that. So uh, we have time, so I'm a little curious. I think I know how to use Burn Time Calculator now to calculate, um, you know, how much distance and stuff I need. So I'm going to switch over to the Retro Engines. And I believe I put in DV, and then I put in that number. So um, I think it's going to be closer to 30 uh, or 40 by the time we get there. So if I put in 40, then by using the full power of the retro engines, I need, I guess, just 180 meters to, to get rid of that velocity. I think that's how that works. We probably most certainly won't cut it that short but it's good to know, and I'm pretty sure that's how that works. All right, let's get a bit closer. So we're at 10 kilometers. Rotation. And let's rotate so we can see our target. And it looks like I did get the timing on this right, because I think we are um, either coming into sunlight or, and I guess we've been here a bit, but it's okay. So bring back up burn time. All right, so let's just do that one more time. So let's say the velocity is going to be 45 by the time we get there, because that uh, has gone up a little bit. So if I'm reading this correctly, we do have the retro engine selected. I'll need 232 meters to null out that velocity. 5, now again, um, like I mentioned before, I don't think that in the real world you'd be pointing directly at the ISS and lighting up powerful engines, because you'd be spraying exhaust particles straight at the object uh, but uh, this is a simulator so we don't have to worry about that 4,000 so we'll get in pretty close here now I don't think I can I, I think what I can do is hit the burn button and it'll it'll burn what I've put in here I think that's how that works 
3,000. So we'll get we'll get about two kilometers, 2, and then I'll do the burn that I programmed in here. That'll give us you know some distance from the ISS, and it'll allow us you know to maneuver around. All right, so let's switch over to uh, Nav two for docking port one. Put that information up onto the HUD. And yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, do a dock. I guess I probably should have turned on non-spherical gravity sources, but I didn't think about that. Translation. Although, maybe, maybe, you know, baby steps here, one, one new thing at a time. Since this time we're doing the rendezvous with Transex and using the XR2, you know, maybe not do too many new things all at once. All right, so we're going to move towards the the docking corridor at uh, two or three kilometer, uh, two or three meters a second. Go ahead and bring it down just a little bit, though. A little bit more velocity. All right, we'll go with that, and then I'll just warp time forward to get down there more quickly. One thousand nine hundred. 800. Okay, we'll go with that. And let me just translate back up to the docking corridor. 700. Rotation. And I can tell them upside down because of these the way these boxes are. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rotation now. 600. 500. Okay, so we are rotated into the correct direction. And as long as we're rotating, I'll go ahead and get the X lined up more and simultaneously take out some of my forward translation. 400. Rotation. Now, I can't see my target anymore, but I'm just trying to get lined up, um, you know, where, where I'll be able to just kind of move forward and dock. I feel like I'm way too far off though now. Yeah, I must have went the wrong direction. Oh wait, actually I would be translating down, or rotating down, because the ISS is above me, so eventually I'll be needing to be like that, I believe. And if I can't find, if I can't find it quickly, I'll just get back into the docking corridor. Yeah, I think I've Yeah, I think I've messed up trying to locate the X. So let me just get a little bit closer to the docking corridor. Warp time four just a little bit. All right, there we are. Now we'll take out some of this translation. Some of this movement that's taking us that way. And we'll translate a bit up. Okay bit more up. Rotation. And just get some rotation just so that things feel a little bit more leveled out. Translation. Rotation. There's the X I was looking for. Translation. All right, so we need to translate a bit that way. Rotation. And now we need to translate a bit. 200. Hmm, I would have thought it would be the other way. Bring the nose up just a bit. And bring the nose over just a bit. So my rotations all feel backwards to me. So there the X is nice and lined up, and we just need a bit of a... Uh, roll this way backwards <laughs> all right translation and now we'll start moving forward so that we can dock with the ISS and yeah this is definitely getting pretty simple to me now 
Uh, but again, you know, I have not enabled uh, gradient non spherical gravity sources, uh, the solar wind. I haven't put, I haven't turned on any of those things yet. But um, for now, I'm just trying to refamiliarize myself with the vessels and the tools. All right, we're almost lined up. And will be dangerous. We'll warp time four just a little bit. Okay. We'll translate a bit up, a bit over, and take out a bit of velocity. Translate a bit down and over. 50, 40. Take out a bit more forward velocity. Translate a bit. We did open the nose cone. I'm almost positive. I'm 99% sure. I'm 98% sure. I'm not so sure. Okay, I'm sure. I was trying to find the indicator here. Where's it at? Oh well, need to pay attention here. I feel like my heart rate should be going in in t in tune with the uh, with that ping sound that I'm hearing. Ten, nine, eight, seven. All right. Six, I think we're good. Five. So we will take a look at the external four, view for the final docking because it just looks kind of cool. Three. Two, Quick look inside, we're okay. One, uh, we're a bit off, I can see it. Contact. Yeah, and you can always tell when it connects if it jumps at all. You weren't you weren't perfectly on, but it was it was really close. It was within that, you know, margin of error. Alright, so that's uh that's cool. That's a docking uh at the space station with the with the XR2. Uh, I'm gonna take a quick look at my resources. So our fuel is is good. We used up all of our scram. We have, um, I guess we can turn on external cooling now so that we're using the O2 from the ISS and cooling from the ISS rather than using our own resources. And we have um, quite a bit of main fuel left. I'll have to do a calculation because I don't think this vessel tells you how much that is in terms of delta V, or does it? Uh, I don't remember. I know the delta glider tells you, you know, based on how much fuel you have left, how much delta V you can expect. Um, but I think I'm going to continue on with this mission as well. I'm going to go on out to the moon. So I'll go ahead and end this part of the, of the series here. Uh, but rather than make a new series to go to the moon, I'm going to continue this one um, because I'm, you know, I'm excited. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with this stuff, and I hope you guys are having fun watching. Let me switch over to the overlay. Uh, if not, then, of course, you can, you know, skip through or whatever. Well, with all that said, I will see you in the next part.